Alright, uh, welcome back to the Unsung Hero. Surprise, surprise, um, GM Nimbus here is a fucking idiot and writes a bunch of chapters that I don't like because they're not good or anything. I guess maybe they would be nice chapters to have in the aftermath of this shooting on campus. But, it's not. It's just kind of not, you know? Like, you'd think, as usual. You would think, like, oh, we're gonna look at his best friend, at his old parents, at his girlfriend, you know, get all these perspectives, and it's just like, no, not really. One chapter is just, is just, you know, his mom and dad just, like, hunkering down and being like, oh, boo-hoo, poor slat. And, like, apparently weed is on the news and he's gone, like, full serial killer? Like, he just laughs at the news camera as he walks past it, and just, like, I don't know. And, like, Slack's grandpa shows up? And that's apparently just, like, a thing. Just like, oh, <laughs> I was never involved with Slack or Micah, but now that Slack's dead, I think I want to be here for my grandson. And that, uh, uh what? It's another one of those things that it's just like, how did this not come up before? You would have thought, you know... Like, I've grown up, and I had an abusive childhood, and it's really hard not to find things, and like, find pieces of conversation that's just like, oh, well, I... I can't say anything about this. Like, you'd think at some point, Slack would be, you know, sitting with Perry, or with Cash, or with, uh, Francois, or the... Yeah, what the fuck is his name? That guy that runs Gene's place that we never ever saw again. <laughs> You'd think one of them would just be like, yeah, my grandpa just bought me a thing. And then Sly would be like, oh, you're lucky. My grandpa's a piece of shit. I've never seen him before. Arr. But it never comes up. It's one of those things. And you're just sort of like supposed to just accept it. The book is ending and we're getting new details. But not like things that are setting up a, a sequel, or things that are sort of clarifying the climax, or anything that the good writers would do. It's just shit. <laughs> We're just getting additional spackle. Like, what is going on? Uh, chapter 35 is the, uh, is the trial. And there's really only, like, a few great parts. Possibly only one. I love, um, on the night of October 12th, we, rece we received a call from Mr. Perry Farmer, the victim's roommate. OBJECTION! Slack's father stated, interrupting the testifying officer. Yes, the judge demanded. Please don't refer to my son as the victim. He had a name. Please use it! Request honored. Please don't refer to the deceased as either Slack or Mr. Buckley. <laughs> Like, I get that he might have just been like, oh, he might have been toying with different sentence structures for that, and just, like, decided on this, but didn't delete all the words from his previous ideas. <laughs> but I just love that, just thinking about that, just like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Request honored, but seriously, go fuck yourself. <laughs> but yeah, apparently, ten hours of deliberation, pain, and anguish on all sides. Quote, unquote is what it takes for the jury to find Mr. Jacob Reed guilty of assault and premeditated murder of an innocent person. And he gets 50 years in Massachusetts State Prison, huh? Massachusetts? I, I mean, I live in Maine, I promise, we have prisons. We have some that could even hold murderers, I bet. And also, select parents get a bunch of money to at least attempt to make up for the crime. From who? What? Was that part of the judgment, or was a slack on a, like a life insurance plan? I don't. It doesn't make sense. Just, yeah, that's it. Chapter thirty-five is the trial, and of course it's all fucky. Everything is not right. Really, <laughs> Ricky from Trailer Park Boys probably has a better respect for the law than GM Nimbus. It's just weird, and all all the details are wrong. They set up. We're setting the final ceremony up for October 20th. 
try to be there. So they're, they're setting up the funeral, which takes place in chapter 36, the final chapter. Chapter 36, Dave Buckley. The funeral was that day. I saw many family members and friends filling the room up. Rows upon rows of people that were close to Slack and were important in his life. I saw the faces of everyone in the room. Many I didn't know were seated among the family and friends of the family. In the front war row were myself, my wife, my son, Lacia, their son, and her family. Perry sat on the extreme end of the pew. The minister walked up in front of the still open casket. Alright, so how- One, two, three, four, five... Her family, six. It's a lot of people for a pew, is it? Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, sorry. Minister, right. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, we are here to bid a final farewell to our friend Slack Jonathan Buckley. I see here many people who deeply care about the man we're here to honor today. I have here a letter written by his wife, Glacia. She wanted me to read a piece aloud. I'll miss you. You are the light of my life, and we have a beautiful child together. I intended to live my life out with you. You may not be here right now, but you will always be here in my mind and in our hearts. I feel badly that Zachariah will not grow up knowing his father, but I will keep your memory instilled within him for the rest of his life. I looked over at Glacia. She was sobbing. Her mother was sitting there with her, comforting her. Everyone in the front was looking at the minister and comforting one another with hugs, kisses, and kind words. Is there anyone out there who has something to share about Slack in the audience right now? Harry raised his hand and stepped forward. I lived with Slack for three years in college. He and I were friends, and I saw the love he gave. Not just to me, or Glacia, or his family, but to everyone. He had a capacity to be giving and caring. He had a legacy that he will not know or even comprehend if he were sitting here. Everyone knew and loved him, and those who didn't respect him didn't know him well enough. I can say that I miss him, and will always remember the person he was and the way he made everyone's life a little bit brighter. He started to tear up toward the end of the speech, but it was beautiful, and it struck a place in everyone's heart. They all knew what he was talking about. He stepped down and took his seat. Thank you, Perry. Is there anyone else with a memory or something to say? I have one! Cash said as he stepped forward. He and I were tight for years. His wedding was phenomenal, and anyone who was there knows that it was. He was the life of the party, and he brought a little something extra into everything he did. Life of the party? Didn't he, like, fucking just do math? Sorry. Mm. My life was the way it was because of Slack and the influence he had. Not only on me, but on everyone. You couldn't help but smile when he used his awkward charm and wit to crack a joke in a little less than acceptable case. He had great words of wisdom and an explorative nature that caused him to be curious at everything. This was the friend I knew. People came up to the podium for at least an hour, saying wonderful things about my son. I didn't realize the true impact he had until Micah stepped up to speak. What? It's been like an hour, dude! What? It Everyone's been talking about how he just was a transformative experience. Although it kind of brings to mind this one movie, uh, World's Greatest Dad, with Robin Williams, where his son's a fucking app. I'm sorry, I'm here to read Unsung Hero, not talk about good things. Micah, right. My brother was an inspiration to me. He made me want to be better and do the best I could in everything. He always had good things to say, and he made me feel like a person. He treated me with kindness and respect, although I may never have always returned those feelings. I regret much of it, and I was heartbroken to hear of his death. 
All I wanted was to find the person responsible for murdering him and taking revenge. He got his revenge and will live with it. I feel a piece of me is gone and won't be easily replaced. I never knew my son felt that way about his brother. How come? They're both your sons. You should be talking to them, Dad. Fuck. Well, I step forward. Thank you for everyone being here. It would mean so much to him to see you all out here in respect and honor for the person he was. I am touched and amazed to hear the words you had to say about my son. I will always remember him with his smile, warm-hearted laughter, and his ability to say the right thing in any situation to make it turn out better. Thank you all for speaking here about this wonderful man. We will now head to the final resting space and finish our proceedings there. The car ride to the spot was silent. I never knew that I would be burying my own son, and I couldn't speak. You just did. My wife and Micah were silent as well. I was going to miss them. We made it to the plot, a piece of Buckley family land. I never thought I'd be using this piece of it so soon. We are here to say goodbye to a great man, who will surely live on in all of our hearts. Not a dry eye was in the room. My wife and I were misted over, and she couldn't even cry. It was a scene that brought me to my knees with tears. I wasn't the only one to break down. Slack's legacy will live on in all of our hearts and minds for eternity. He was a father, husband, lover, and great son. Why are you thinking about him having sex in the middle of this eulogy? What the fuck? Lover, huh? I will never regret having him or how he was raised. It was just that powerful. I feel blessed to have known him, especially as his father. The hole was solemn as the casket was lowered in. The hole? Oh, does he mean like the grave? But... The, the, the hole's not solemn. That's like a thing that people do. Unless they dug the grave in the shape of a frowny face? Like, is this supposed to be weird personification? Or fuck? Damn it, sorry. Mm. In the end, I found my father again. But that still doesn't make up for anything. We got home and I saw something on the table. It was today's paper, with Slack's obituary cut out and framed. Slack Buckley was the man you wanted to know. A great man who had a young son, Zachariah Carter, of only two months. A wife, Glacia, of seven months. They saying his wife is seven months old? But that's, that's a really weird way to frame that, especially with the, what came previously in this... Uh, sorry. He left behind his parents, David and Arlene Buckley, as well as his brother, Michael. Many people had said words about him that were heartfelt and touching at a memorial held at Wishkeen College in Massachusetts last week. Those who remembered him there showed that they will truly remember him forever. He will be forever loved, missed, and his memory will live on. Oh, here we go, here's the title drop. One described him as, quote, an unsung hero, unquote, for all the good he did, and the positive impact he had without knowing or intending to do that. To him, it was just daily life. We will all miss you. Slack Buckley, June 12th, 1990 to October 7th, 2011. We will all miss him, that's for sure. I, I'm, I'm raising my hand in real life. I don't miss him. And I don't miss this book. My fuck, it is over. It is finally over and... <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy. I feel like I've, like, you know, just come back from a shipwreck and I'm kissing the dirt, finally happy to be back on dry land. This shit is over! Just... GM Nimbus, you wrote some insane, like, self-insert fanfiction. That's... But there's no, like, fandom. So, it's just self-insert fiction? Question mark? Because I know your real name, Nimbus, and you have the same initials as Slack Buckley. And... This whole thing is about how he's such a, a lovely person, and everyone's just, oh, wow. And, like, he, I guess he couldn't think of anything, like, any context for people to actually, like, like the main character and say nice things about him. So he had to come up with this plot at the end where this pothead gets back out of jail and kills him, 
so that they can set up the funeral, and at the funeral they can say nice things. Again, I have to go back to World's Greatest Dead. I know I, wasn't, I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but like, one of the big recurring things through the movie is that Robin Williams' son in the movie is a fucking dick. Nobody likes it. And then Robin Williams finds him dead in his own closet, you know, autoerotic asphyxiation and all that. He, he, he carotines, don't worry about it. But Robin Williams writes a suicide note, this really elegant moving piece, to sort of cover up the fact that his son was, you know, choking his chicken and choking himself at the same time, and that's how he died. And everyone's just like, wow, what a beautiful, tragic soul. And, like, all the girls at school are just like, I was going to ask him out. And all the guys at school are just like, oh, man, he was, like, my best friend. And these are people that had never talked to this boy. And, like, that's all I can think of. Like, that's... Like, all of these people being incredibly disingenuous. You know, for the sake of the funeral and of remembrance. And nobody wants to malign the dead. Like, I think that's what happens in these final chapters, is that... Nobody has anything genuinely nice to say about Slack Buckley, because he's just a fucking nerd and just an idiot. Like, maybe in story, Glacia and Perry might be happy. Just, I guess his parents out of a sense of obligation. But, like, Cash is popping up at the funeral and saying a few kind words. And, like, really, how long did Slack and Perry know each other? I mean, I mean that seriously. There's no indication here of how long. Like, why isn't Francois here? Francois was in the prologue, and only the prologue! <laughs> and was apparently the best friend since high school. Like, I'm gonna go find it right now. Francois was my buddy from Washington College, and we hung out. We went to high s He went to high school with me, and we had been talking that day about the fact that I was going to dinner with Glacia. The girl I had specific feelings for. Yeah, I forgot that he, like, said that so stupidly. But anyway, yeah. Like, Francois has apparently known this boy for years and just couldn't make it. Couldn't even, like, write a letter. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's really incredible, overall, just how much this does wrong. This Some people have compared this, like, when I've done some live readings of The Unsung Hero. Some people have said, that, like, this is the room of literature, and I... I have to agree. Like, it's filled with all of those, like, weird details, and, like, the phrasing is never quite right, and there's all these plot points that show up exactly once. Like, I went over it in that one video where I had just, like, skipped 20 chapters because this book fucking sucks. But, yeah. There's this whole part where just he remembers the fucking pamphlet that he picked up at the clinic and remembers the title of it and is very specific about having, you know, used this pamphlet multiple times. And it's just like, but there are real people and real relationships and real problems and just the world around him. It's just, fuck. How does he remember a pamphlet, but forget all of these friends that he apparently has? I don't... I don't know. It's so mind-boggling. It just... it really is just the room of literature. Like, I really... I really want to just send this thing to a publisher or something. Just like Atlanta Nice this shit. And just be like, hey, check it out. This is supposed to be horrible. Haha, <laughs> you said you would... you said you would print it jokes on you, this is a piece of shit. And just, like, a lot of the details, too, are just stuff that either the author really likes, or stuff that the author wishes he had. Like, uh, Slack's, um, car of choice, the, the candy, candy apple red cobalt. When, uh, good old GM Nimbus was in college, his roommate actually had that car. And a girlfriend who matches the description of Glacia really well. But that boy was not in computer science, I tell you what. But just, I'm... Like, I'm just kind of tapping the page down key, and just sort of, like, looking at this these nonsense words that... <laughs> Sorry, I, I scrolled past the, the bong scene. 
I'm just like looking at all these words that just he put them together and it just it made shit. I <laughs> I can't describe it any other way. It just made shit. So it's, just, it's incredible how much he gets wrong. Not just about like justice systems and you know things of that nature, but just about like interpersonal communication in, in general. Just hasn't he talked to people? Hasn't he seen people talking to each other? It's not like this. It's none of it is like this. How do you talking to people? I mean, you guys might know, I'm a writer myself, of sorts, and I'm not saying that it's super easy, but I'm just saying that they say that you should write what you know. Shouldn't everyone know dialogue? Shouldn't everyone know what it's like to be in the presence of other humans and have to communicate ideas and concepts to them? How do you fuck it up this bad? How is this dialogue always so stilted? And it, it sounds like he hands the script off to like this 90s marketing executive that cuts the, the leading E out of the word extreme. Like, some people just randomly mix in this like totally rad slang and stuff. And it's just like, what? Especially when he's not painting these people as that kind of person at all. So it just ends up really jarring when they go totally radical on I could probably make this a whole nother video just complaining about everything wrong with this. Although I did a lot of that in that one video where I skipped 10 chapters and just like, nope, nope, not reading these. Because they're boring and they're kind of... Half the book is filler. I just realized this. What the hell? How in the world do you create a piece of literature that is 50% just like null content? How in the world do you write something so devoid of soul? So devoid of any like wit or... Is there a theme here? Is there a moral? What? What is the point of this? Like, I'm not trying to get high and mighty and be like, oh no, literature has to mean something or anything like that, but it's just like... It kind of does, though. Because... Even if it's just, like, here to make you laugh or something, but this is played completely straight. It's the bookstore equivalent of, like, a fluff piece in, in your newspaper. This is a 90-second exp expose on a water-skiing squirrel. Like, there's no point to this. And even if this was, you know, more technically competent, with the sentence structure being better, the punctuation and capitalization being more correct, the dialogue being less stilted, it still wouldn't, like, teach you anything. I mean, if you look at the overall plot, he gets a girlfriend, whatever. But like, the, the things that happen to Slack are that he defends his girlfriend by shoving a bong up some dude's ass. Dude goes to jail. Dude comes back at the very end of the book and just kills him. What does that do for the, the narrative? What does that even, like, add? What is that supposed to prove? Is the moral of the story just, like, don't fuck with stoners? Is this seriously, like, Grief for Madness or something? Like, what is going on? Is this entire book about the dangers of drug use? Or of just, like, associating with people who use drugs? Or, I, like, I'm really struggling with this. People, please leave comments or something. I really want to know. What the hell is the moral supposed to be? Or, like, the theme or anything? I, I don't know how many words I have left for this piece of shit. I really don't. Again, it's right in front of me this whole time, and I'm just looking at it, and it's... It's just so many words, but they don't mean anything. And like I said, there's all of those, like, plots and subplots and characters and all of these things that just, like, disappear and mean nothing. Is, is that the secret meaning of this book? Is this some sort of, like, nihilist screed? Where, you know, Slack has built up this reputation, is going to school, is raising money has a wife and child, all of this stuff, and just, like, it ends up meaning nothing. It does not feed the worms in his grave any better. When the heat death of the universe arrives, Slack's achievements will disappear along with everything else. Is that, like, the secret theme here? 
I don't understand. We've read this book together, do you understand? I know I don't. Like, I don't even care if this part isn't funny, I'm leaving this in. You're just gonna have to deal with it, because I'm just in shock. Like, I want you to know that this is what happens to someone that reads this book all the way through. This is some HP Lovecraft shit. You go, you read this, you read every word in this book, and you will surely go mad, and there is no returning. You cannot unsee the things you have seen. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to, like, leave on a, a good note, though. And I just want to say that, um, Slack and Glacia put together a, a quote-unquote marriage scrapbook. I don't know what that means. Pictures, letters, cards, anything that happens in our marriage. That's what she says. She wants almost like a baby book, but for their, you know, holy matrimony. And I just imagine, like, the obituary and just, like, a picture of Slack just, like, splayed out in a pool of his own blood outside the apartment. Just, like, <laughs> memories! Oh! Like, I really hope that makes it into the scrapbook. Really, if I was any better at, like, Photoshop or art in general or anything like that, I would put together a scrapbook of, you know, just, like, Slack plus Glacia with with a heart and, like, the front cover is them smushing wedding cake into their each other's faces and then there's, like, a montage of pictures representing stuff throughout the story, like the bong shove. And... Then, like, the very last page is just, like, Slack dead, and the trial, and the funeral. And all set to, like, some peppy music. Although, if anyone's just interested in drawing that, I'm not gonna say no, but I am gonna tell you you're wasting your fucking time dedicating actual talent to the unsung hero. Because that's what I did! <sighs> What have I been doing with my life?